Addiction is not your problem. Addiction is a symptom of the problem. Drugs is not your issue. Sex is not your issue. It's the thing that you run to. It's the thing that you're substituting for, but it's not your issue. At some point, you have to get to the root of what the real issue is in your life. All of these things that you're running to are just symptoms. That's it. They're symptoms. It doesn't matter if it's drugs, sex. It doesn't matter if it's a substance, a process. It doesn't matter. They're all the same. You could, you could stop drinking. You could stop doing drugs and still be addicted to something. And it still be unhealthy. You don't have to tell an addict that what they're doing is wrong. You know that it's wrong. No one has to tell you that shooting a needle is, is bad. Of course it's bad. And that's the problem when it comes to addiction. When you look in the mirror, you know what you do. And what's exhausting is you have to remember the lies that you tell. Who did you tell this to? Who did you tell that lie to? You have to keep all of the lies straight. And it's exhausting. And what freedom really is, it's being able to be consistent with every person that you're around. Because you're telling the truth. You're not hiding anything. True bondage is that. You're in bondage. You're in chains to something. And that something is either a substance, a process, a person, an emotion. It doesn't matter what it is. Regardless. This process needs to be interrupted. So where does the gospel come into play? Here it is simply. Jesus' death, burial, resurrection paved the way for you to be saved. That word is sozo. That means whole. Saved, delivered, free. That's it. Jesus' life was given for you to walk in complete freedom. And religion teaches that it's not possible. It's not possible for you to, to stop drinking, to stop doing drugs, to stop beating your wife, to stop lashing out in anger. And so what religion teaches you, it teaches you to perform, to act like you got it all together, to act one way at church, to act one way with this group or that person, and then behind closed doors, you're completely different. Whether that means you're, you're beating your spouse you're getting hammered every night, you're shooting up, you're popping pills, you're vegging out watching Netflix, you're codependent to another person, meaning their mood dictates your mood. If they're angry with you, then it affects your ability to, to be happy. You know, codependency is, is a dangerous drug. Ministry addiction is a dangerous drug because the very thing that you're doing, which is unhealthy for you, affirms you. That's the difference between ministry addiction and drugs is one is obviously negative and the other, not so much. Addiction is actually a good thing. God created addiction. But what happens is, is we get it perverted. Instead of being addicted to him, his presence, his word, prayer, we self-medicate and we pervert what was meant for him. And right now, many of you are running to different things, and it's perverted. Addiction is like a fire. <laughs> if it's pointed in the wrong direction, it's going to set a whole forest ablaze. My role in this video is to help point your fire in the right direction. Because right now, you're running to something. You're running to something to fulfill a desire, a need. And really, there's a, a wound in your past that needs to be dealt with. And the thing that you're self-medicating with, it's a cheap substitute. It's a perversion of what God desires. And really, if you look at addiction, it's adultery. It's prostitution. You're called to be in a relationship with the creator of the universe. And instead of running to him, you're running to a substance, a person, a process. And he's asking you to run to him. And this might sound controversial, but he doesn't need you to clean yourself up. He doesn't need you to stop doing this or stop doing that. He loves you the same on your worst binge and your best behavior. His love doesn't change based upon what you're doing. Of course, it's a lot easier when you stop something. But that's not the point. 
And I know that's controversial, especially if you're in addiction ministry. Yes, you have to have time and space separated from the thing that you're running from. But God doesn't need you to clean yourself up. He desires to do it with you. He wants to help you go through the process. And right now, the thing that you're running to, it's idolatry. The first commandment is this, thou shalt have no other gods before me. So what's really happening is it's idolatry. You're running to that substance instead of him. Because whatever it is, whether it's a process, a person, or a substance, you're running to it. It's an idol. And those idols need to be torn down. And for some, it's an instant thing. But for others, it's a process that you have to go through. Just like Jezebel, just like Ahab, there's a process that you need to go through. Like it or not, at some point, you have to see, like, this video right now is, is a speed bump. What speed bumps are meant to do, they're, they're meant to slow down a vehicle. And right now, the path that you're on, it's like you're driving a car. And now you're hitting a speed bump, and it's time for you to slow down and actually look around at what's going on. Because you can't fight an enemy that you don't know exists. There is definitely a spiritual component to this. There's definitely a psychological component to this. There's definitely a process component to this. There's an emotional problem that exists. All of these things are working against you right now. But if you ignore it, and if you don't take the time to slow down and to look around, you're going to keep doing the same thing and expecting a different result. And that's the definition of insanity. What if this year is your year to break free of this cycle? Many people go to rehab and it's an it's amazing experience. Many people go to a ministry and it's, it's beautiful. Many times when we go to these places, we, we learn religion. And if you're an addict, you can latch on to certain people really strongly. And you can put your faith and hope and trust in a person. If that person lets you down, that's really where the process begins. Because many times when, when you put your trust in people and they let you down, it becomes like an old wound that you experience. It's not necessarily in the moment that you're, you're hurt. It brings up a lot of emotions from your past, whether it was your parents or the lack thereof. Many of you have a wound and whenever you feel that wound get touched, it causes you to revert back to a certain behavior. And it starts your process. Again, addiction, it's not a bad thing. Unless it's pointed in the wrong direction. My job is to help you steward that fire and to point it in the right direction. Because if you can take the sun and you can harness it into a magnifying glass, you can create one central point of burning. This is a fire. And if you can put that fire in the right direction, you can do amazing things for the Lord.